Byron Buxton and Luis Sarais both led the Twins with four hits today. That is one more hit than Miguel Sano has hit all year. However, I'm sure he'll take the win over the White Sox. Yes, Twins fans, we are one win away from pulling out the brooms on Sunday. Welcome to Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, David Shelsky. You can follow me on Twitter at MN Sports Podcast. Do me a solid and click the like button below and hit subscribe if you want to see more Minnesota Twins content on YouTube. Yes, folks, we got one more game to show the White Sox we mean business. Then we'll host the Tigers for three games before going on the road to visit the Tampa Bay Rays. Let's review Saturday's game. Now, the Twins started out, and this is a familiar story, how they had bases loaded, no outs, and only got one run across. Because in the past, the Twins have been notorious not to be able to hit with runners in scoring position. However, that wasn't the case the rest of the game. We scored two in the second, four in the fourth, another in the fifth. We gave up one run after we let, uh, after we removed Bundy from the game, a home run in the sixth inning. And then we let him score in the eighth. Ended up winning 9-2. to two. Now we had 14 hits to so their 7. And the White Sox had another error today. But we, again, had another great game playing defense. Let's go down the lineup. Tell you how they did. Byron Buxton led off. He was 4 hits. Went 4-for-4. Four four. He had um, scored 3 runs and 2 RBIs. He's batting 344 now. He's a spark plug. He was all smiles today. He was loving the game. Luis Arise, he had four hits. He went four for five. He had th led the team with three RBIs. He's batting 364. He's right where he needs to be, batting second, honestly. Carlos Correa, batting 192. He had, didn't have any hits, but he was able to get two walks today to help out. He, did, he was able to score a run. Jorge Polanco, it's batting 200, struggling a little bit. You know, he's our switch hitter. He had one RBI, got one out, of, one for five today with a run scored. Kepler, now this guy gets on base still. He's bat, you know, he's on like 320 on base percentage, but he's batting 191. Uh, he was one for four today. He did get on, he did have a walk today. Trevor Larnack, um, honestly, this guy can hit. Um, he did end the game with like two strikeouts, but he had a ball that should have gone out if the temperature, if the wind was blowing five miles an hour or less. Uh, it looked like he crushed the ball that it was going to go out of the stadium, and it died at the right field fence. Unfortunately, this guy's hit a lot of good balls. It's not going out of the park. If it was June, it would have, maybe even May. But yeah, he's. He's still batting 250. I think he's hopefully he sticks with the team. He went one for five today, two RBIs. Miguel Sano continues to struggle. He went 0 for five today. Now, what I can, what I want to say about Miguel Sano, he he's played good defense. He's made great decisions playing defense. He, he shows he can go back for the foul ball. He's cut off a ball and thrown it to third, making a great decision the other night. He does a lot of good things in the field. And he was a third baseman, and honestly, we signed him at 16. He was a shortstop. Now he's a left tackle. He just grew out of it. But a lot of it be said that he went out there and lost 25 pounds, thinking he would, it would help him get a faster start. Now, he's not having a problem with breaking pitches. He's letting him go out, out of the strike zone. He's not chasing his fastballs he's not catching up to. Now, today he hit one not slightly dead left center, and it didn't go out. But on a better day, when the wind not blowing and it being a little bit warmer, that was going 410, 420. It was, he crushed the ball. It just didn't go out. He hit, it was a little too under it. If he lined it a little more and it would have ate through the wind. But, I mean, he could have had a home run today. He did uh, show. Some restraint. He got kind of screwed on a high fastball, a little outside, and he said something to the to the umpire, and he didn't toss him. And 
Well, and it seems like the umpire has pretty good restraint because a little bit later, their catcher for the White Sox chewed him out pretty bad. But concern was the ninth inning. He just uh, let him walk back to the dugout, didn't throw him out. Although I, he probably should have been thrown out. Now, Jeffers, our catcher, two for three, had you know that's three. Um, his last three hits have been extra base hits, so he's getting out of that single slump he's been in. He's been in 194, but honestly, he's been a little hot the past two games. That's good to see. He probably won't play tomorrow unless he DHs. And honestly, I think that Sano should probably DH tomorrow the way he's been, you know, struggling. I don't think you should bench Sano. I think you should just DH him. Let him not worry about defense. That's um, and Jeffers hit a home run, crushed it to left field. Buxton followed that up two hitters later with a with a crush ball, a second deck or third deck. I don't know. It was pretty bad. Um, Nick Gordon, honestly, I, I love him. Uh, he played left field and shortstop today. Now, I think Rocco did a good move and sat Buxton and and uh, put Garlic in there to finish the game out after he had already had five at bats. So I think smart move, manage him. Why, you know, Buxton plays all out and let's limit his opportunities to get hurt. So I felt that was a good move. Nick Gordon. He just he played a solid left field, had a great catch again today. Played solid center field when their Buxton was DHing when he came back. He, he's just um, a super utility, and honestly, he's he's pretty good at the plate. He uh, he's driving the ball. Uh, unfortunately, two people. He is batting two sixty one, but you know you got your ninth hitter batting two sixty one and can play short second center left field i mean great <laughs> who wouldn't want nick gordon on their team now i do have a funny story my first my first uh my first game i ever seen in major league ballpark i went to see the royals play the yankees my best friend was a royals fan and tom gordon was pitching that day he was still a starter at the time so he hadn't moved to the bullpen but my first game was watching tom gordon play and it took my son to uh to the Futures game, the All-Star game in Miami. And the first game my son saw, um, Major League quality in a Major League field, was Nick Gordon playing shortstop for the America's team. So, I, And I had the pleasure of meeting Nick at spring training in Fort Myers and, getting, and telling him that story. Um, I don't know how he took it. He'd smile a little bit, thought it was cool. Um, but hey, that was, that was a good time for me. I saw his dad play Gordon had the best curveball. Um, and, uh, you know, his brother plays pretty well too. He had that amazing homer for Miami when, um, her, Fernandez got, uh, died in that boating accident. Uh, that was a special moment, but Nick Gordon, I, I love this player. He's a, he's a, he's a character. Uh, they should they should have him mic'd up all the time. I love this player. He's one of my favorite twins right now. Now, Dylan Bundy was a big story today. He had five innings pitched, four hits, given up, four Ks. He's down to a .59 ERA. I think he's got 15.1 innings pitched. So now the, a lot of complaints would happen. Rocco, you don't let people go deep into the games. One of the stories I always like to talk about is is Nolan Ryan became like president of baseball operations for the Rangers, and the one thing he wanted to do, I think that was his position, correct me if I'm wrong, but he wanted starters to go deeper into the games, and that changed the Texas Rangers franchise and ended up going deep into the playoffs into the World Series under his watch, and that was his strategy. It seems like that is exactly the opposite strategy we have with the Twins. Now, I can't completely argue with um, the move. Bundy has struggled last year, and his 79 pitches were, was about 12 more than the most he's pitched the previous two games. He did throw 59 strikes. This guy got out of two um, sticky situations um, with two runners on. I think I forget what innings it was. But he did an amazing job getting out of there. Uh, you just 
pitching great this year. We got a lot of guys pitching great. Let's talk about it. The uh, let me pull it up. So Bailey Ober, 16 innings pitched. He's at a 1.00 WHIP. Batters are batting 220 off of him. His 2.81 ERA. He's only given up 13 hits in 16 innings. Joe Ryan, this is might become one of the best trades we've ever made. Uh, 16 innings pitch, only has given up nine hits, three earned runs, .88 WHIP, 167 batting average against them. He's got a 169 ERA. Um, just having a great year, and he's still rookie eligible, so we may be back to getting. Uh, twins as rookies of the year, and uh, he's going to have a shot, especially if he continues to pitch like this. Dylan Bundy, I did talk about it, 0.59 ERA, 15.1 innings pitch. He's only given up 10 hits. Uh, his 12 strikeouts, it's pretty good for him. 0.72 whip, amazing. Uh, 175 batting average against. We are throwing strikes. I mean, Dylan Bundy's only got one walk. Joe Ryan's got the most with five. Three with um, Bailey Ober. Chris Paddock has zero. Zero walks. He's got seven strikeouts and nine innings pitched. I was a little weary about this um, this trade, but I was pretty happy they've got Emilio Pagan and a player to be named later. We don't know who it is yet. Hopefully it works out. we got some time to pick him. But uh, we ended up needing some depth because Sonny Gray went down. Now he's a 1.22 whip, 2.9. Seven batting average. Uh, he's given up 11 hits and nine innings pitched. My big worry about him is his elbow. He's already had Tommy John surgery, and there's a report that he has a minor tear in one of his ligaments. I don't, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to go look up and bore myself and go look up which one. But that was my worry. Um, however, we were going to lose Rodgers no matter what, and we might have traded him off at the – trade deadline even if we were in uh, contention we tried to trade him before but he hurt his finger so you wouldn't you wouldn't have been on the team anyways so we ended up having an opportunity to get chris paddock who when he was a rookie you know just showed up yeah outstanding rookie year now chris archer has been a pleasant surprise he had no spring training barely anyways 8.1 innings pitched, 1.08 whip, 194 batting average against. He's got eight strikeouts. Again, 8.1 innings, three walks. We uh, 2.16 ERA. So this is a guy we tried to go after in the past. We got him now. He's showing like he was when we wanted him before. So hopefully he keeps that up. He's got the attitude. You love watching him pitch. He's exciting. Um, just hope he uh, keeps it together. Now, Sonny Gray went down, but, I mean, in spring training, he was lighting it up pretty good. Hopefully, he comes back, he's healthy, stays uh, stays in the lineup. Uh, we, he made a – Rocco made a con conscious choice to go six uh, starting pitchers, considering we were, could go deeper um, in April with the with the lineup. I think 28 on the roster. Yon Duran has been – Amazing, although he's given up some runs here, unfortunately. But he's he's learning the bit. He's learning the business, as I call it. It was a time where we bring would bring up starters, and Duran was a starter, and and brought him up as a reliever. Just get their feet wet. They could show what they could do. Think of Johan Santana. He didn't start out as a starting pitcher, but he's come, now he's the best ever for the Minnesota Twins. So, you know, Johan Duran, I don't think he'll become a starter down the road, but I think he is a high-impact, high-energy closer and a, and a guy that can close in two innings. And, you know, think of Joe Nathan. Let's, let's get a guy like that who can come in, shut somebody down, and pitch the ninth, and, you know, in the eighth, and then pitch the ninth. That's the kind of guy I want uh, Johan Duran to be. Now, there's been some highlights. Josh Winder, he probably will go back down. We needed him a little bit. Um, but I think he'll go down and be, uh, stay a starter. Griffin Jacks maybe too, although he's pitched well at times. Emilio Pagan is leading the team in saves. What can I say? He's got a history of that. Let's, let's give him that opportunity. Let's keep it up. I like it. 
Joe Smith. This guy's come into sticky situations. This is a guy, he hasn't given up a run yet. Uh, 1.07 whip, 176 batting against him, five strikeouts, 4.2 innings. He doesn't break glass per se, but he uh, he hits his spots. Uh, he's got a lot of movement. He Weird delivery, sidearm delivery. Great pickup. This is going to... This is what's going to make you get in the playoffs is, a, is bringing in a pitcher like this. Unfortunately, Alcala is on a 60-day DL, so that was even more important that we got Pagan and uh, Smith. Now, I won't talk about much about the other players. Um, just I was just talking about a few standouts. But we're, we play the White Sox tomorrow, Archer's pitching. We'll see what the lineup looks like early on. I'll share it on, on Twitter. Um, you can follow me at MN Sports Podcast. I'm David Shelsky. I'm your host for Minnesota Sports Talk. Have a great day.